Coming into Calibra, the small island off the east coast of Puerto Rico on the southeast corner, was well buoyed, just like you'd expect in the United States of America. Also, using Guru Maps, those are really helpful, just like I'd have in the rest of the world for satellite images. So Josh today is undoing the freaking tangles and twists in my anchor chain. And I just want to show you what the hell he's dealing with here. Isn't that lovely? All the twists collected into one spot. Holy mackerel. All right, so um, over the time that, uh, since the last time the chain got untangled and untwisted, it was building up twists and all. And we were having trouble getting it to uh, come up through the hawse here or the whatever hole you want to call it here by the gypsy. And also having a hard time getting it to go back down to the chain locker. So what I've done is I've, um, I've pulled up all the chain that I can that has twists in it and through a series of steps of making it out and this and that and transferring the load from uh, the original snubber which was on the other side of the twists to a uh, snubber that's on this side of the twists. The last step in this operation is to get that little rat's nest over the top of the chain so it will untwist itself and hopefully the swivel down at the anchor will take care of all that but if it doesn't once the anchor is hanging off the bottom i'll let it spin and all those twists should come out as much as possible we're only in 15 feet of water so i'm hoping that these twists work their way all the way down so that i don't have to deal with them as they come up over the gypsy again it took a little bit longer than i thought i thought this was going to be a half hour project <laughs> every boat project is a half hour project isn't it yeah so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to try to hook this with the boat hook and get it to plop over to the other side. I don't want to get the uh, boat hook stuck in the chain. Would it be easier if one of us got the dinghy? Uh oh. Yeah. That was a very productive little thing there. Make progress. Slowly but surely. So I see there's two different snubbers on there, Josh. They're both from Mantis, huh? Right. So this was generation one Mantis snubber. It's a, it's a great um, anchor hook. Uh, normally they come with another piece of plastic that fits in here. It's not as intuitive, so Mantis changed the design to make uh, a little bit more intuitive. This is a great snubber though, although someone has taken the little plastic keeper off. so That, that would be Patrick. So that when it goes slack, um, I have found the chain in this vicinity instead of up in here. But I think that was only in the process of hauling it up. You would apply this by doing this and then sliding it up or down the link until it fits in the slot and that's it. And then the, you swing the plastic keeper over and that would fill this space in here. So why do you think, what is your guess as to why Patrick would have taken that off? I don't know, I know it, might have got, it might have gotten in his way when he was trying to play with it. I have no idea really. Yeah. I mean, I've never had an issue with it. So Mantis went from that chain hook, this is M1 to M2. Model, just M? I know, it says M for M Mantis. Right but here? It was model number one. Okay. And this is just a claw, the move, right? So this one is a lot more intuitive. You slip it over a chain link and it grabs a chain link like that. And then you take this plastic keeper or this rubber keeper, just like that. And now it can't pop off when it goes slack. A lot of people don't like these keepers. You know, they tend to wear out. I haven't worn mine out yet. You can get uh, replacements from Mantis for cheap, like three or four dollars. But they do they do loosen up a little bit after a few uses, huh? Yeah. And this is a very strong hook. You know, you're not going to have it fail. You're not going to have that one fail either. Yeah. Uh, it's just that this that this one comes off when it gets slack tied, and we have noticed that it does do that. It can come off if you if the if, keeper is missing. If we have the 
keep her missing like we do right now. <laughs> So you need me down there now. So as I walk to the bow, you'll see that there is a lower locker for the bottom 150 feet of the chain, 125 feet of the chain, and then the upper locker that has the first 125 or 150 feet of chain. Okay. You notice how I flaked it back and forth and then up and down. So it's the same thing down below in this lower locker and we flaked it in, you know, back, like basically back and forth, 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 back and, forth, and then this way. Back and forth that way and according to Josh that's always the way that you want to do it because because if you don't if you do in circles every time you take a circle it puts another twist in but we definitely don't want to go in a circle because that just adds a twist with every circle that you put in and we're trying to get all the twists out right now we don't want to put any more in in the bottom locker or in the top locker so I did the same thing in the front there so again, when the work is over, then we started to explore. Look at our cool car. Let me show you. We got the red one. The green one wasn't available. The red one was available. That's what we got. We got the red one. Sábado, Sábado, Domingo. Sábado, Domingo. Oh, Domingo. Ahora. Sí. Tonight. Sí. En la noche. Ahora. Sí. Ahora? Yes. Or en la noche. En la noche. En la noche. <laughs> sí. Okay. We met up with Ike and had a great meal by the sea. It's so pretty, I don't even want to eat it. That is grouper with shrimp. And what they call amarillos. Amarillos. It's like plantains. Yeah, yellow. Plantains, fried yellow. plantains. Yellow plantains. For a little bit of salad. And a shrimp to boot. They are. They are Our dinghy is safely tied up right across the way and we just have to walk over the bridge, the orange and white thing that you see at the end here, and we'll get back to our dinghy. After a nice meal, we took our dinghy down the rest of the waterway and that opened up onto the other side of the island. Where's Josh? He's going to go find a woman. So continuing our tour, we went to a lot of the great beaches on the island. And boy, there's a lot of really pretty ones. I was really thankful to Ike, you know, although we had split things off in a romantic fashion, you know, he sort of buddy-boated and sort of stayed close by, and I think he kind of stays close by to this day just in case, uh, just making sure that his friend uh, doesn't come up shy for crew or have technical problems. Yeah, thanks, Ike. Thanks for sticking by and watching out for me as your friend. Appreciate that. So we brought up the chain, all untwisted and good to go, stowed it, got everything ready, and took off for Vieques, the next Puerto Rican island. And Ike went to Puerto Rico proper, and we said our final, final goodbyes. Once on this passage, we have to get the monitor rigged and going. Okay. Maybe like on an overnight or yeah. something longer. Yeah, yeah, something longer, but uh, at least once. Yeah. Because uh, I got one on my boat, and it really is wonderful. So there you have it. There you go. Yeah. An endorsement for monitor wind vanes. <laughs> and there's Vegas. So here we are on the south shore of Vegas, maybe a third of the way from the east side. Having a really, really, really mellow sail downwind. It's all like National Wildlife Refuge or something. There's like not a single house. There's one building on the top of that highest hill right there with a cell phone tower. Yeah, we're just sailing along quite comfortably, just 
Just the head sail up. Nothing else. Going pretty slow. How about now? What's that? About three and a half. There's about ten knots of wind behind us. Nice day. Just going along. Nice. Oh, I see a sailboat mast over there. One anchorage, but not the anchorage we're going to. We're going a little bit further on to see some wild horses on the beach. Somewhere about 200 feet that way is six feet of water. <laughs> so we won't go in it any further. Really nice anchorage, really nice area, but there's nothing very close at all. So we just swam and walked the beach, watched the sunset, paint the sky, colors, and we went and looked for wild horses, of course. Don't know if they're wild or not. I did see various piles of apples left, obviously, for the horses, so people around here do know that the horses come. Maybe they're wild, maybe they're not. But there's a mom and her baby. Very sweet. Oh, I wish I knew if they're wild. So one reason for coming to this bay, besides just the horses, was the bioluminescent bays that Puerto Rico is famous for, and there's one right here. Booked a tour with a nearby company who's going to pick us up on this beach tonight, and we're going to put the dinghy on the beach and take a chance and go to Mosquito Bay with kayaks to look for bioluminescence. There are five bio bays in the world, and three of them are in Puerto Rico. Categorized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the brightest bio bay in the world, Mosquito Bay is listed as one of the most magical places in the world. The bioluminescence is caused by a microorganism which glows whenever the water is disturbed, leaving a trail of neon blue behind it. Fish, turtles, and stingrays swim by, leaving this glow, as do our kayaks and paddles moving through the water. It was truly a magical experience. Much better in real life. And God, did we get money! Hard to capture on a camera. I found it much, much easier to just be with one crew once we reached a destination. Um, than to be with two. It was just easier coordinating what we were going to do and it was just a much easier atmosphere for me. Maybe because I'm just used to being part of a couple on a boat, not having a crew crew. So Josh and I fell into a very easy, simple routine and enjoyed each other's company. Hey, of all the islands that we've been to so far, all the way up the chain, I think I enjoyed Puerto Rico and Calabria and Vieques more than any other place in the Caribbean so far. I had access to some great food in the supermarkets. Look at the inside of this tuna. <laughs> I mean, it's so good. Look at all the things all over. I don't even know what those things are, but wow. Mm. Look at that bite right there. Nice. Josh and I got very comfortable sailing with each other, just the two of us. Um, of course, it was pretty easy sailing on the south side of Vegas and on to Puerto Rico, so there wasn't really too much to worry about. We would still get the crew when we got to the other side of Puerto Rico to take off to the Bahamas. But we just had really lazy downwind sails just during the day, nothing overnight, nice and easy and boring. And we're sailing away from Vegas to the mainland. Puerto Rico. Very pleasant downwind sail and about Boring is good. If it's boring, you did everything right. But yes, very pleasant. Very easy day. So far, never say never, but so far, so good. So light sort of dawned on Marblehead. I was taking the boat, believe it or not, by myself, over from one island to another island. Um, and it occurred to me, you know, all this time I've been saying that I need a guy on board, I need a guy on board, I need a guy on board. And it occurred to me that if anything happened on that short little sail, um, that it would be me fixing it. If I had crew on board, no matter what crew I've had on board so far, if something was to happen, I'd be fixing it. You know, maybe I wouldn't be able to fix what went wrong, but I'd certainly be the first line of defense anyways. Yeah, I need somebody on board, but I only really need somebody on board if something goes wrong. That's what occurred to me today. Today's revelation. We've got about six or eight more miles to go to the anchorage that we want to spend the night in around a little corner protected by a reef. Beautiful, huh? So 
that we got behind us. Yep, very nice. How lucky are we to be sailing on this great day? <laughs> I can't take all the credit for boring and easy, um, you know, predict wind. There's nothing better, you know. A lot of people will look at windy and take the ECMWF and the GFS forecast. You need the PWG. You need the PWE. You need the other forecasts that they have. You can't just base it on two forecasts. Sing a line or two of it. I base it on all of them. They all agree, or I don't go. He's very good, isn't he? Nope. <laughs> Josh is one of the most pleasant, too. happiest, easygoing sailors you could ever sail with. And he helps women gain confidence skippering their own boat. How good is that? So we have Josh here. And he has his 100 ton license, which is pretty damn impressive. And then we have Jeremiah here. And he's got his what license? I don't got no license no more. He's got no license. He used to have unlim unlimited license. This guy doesn't need no freaking license to ride. He just rides. Someone's calling you. The new crew and I are splitting a margarita. We already had one, and we don't think we can handle another one. But maybe half. Almost. I did pretty good, I think. Yeah. Perfect though. It's from many, many years of pouring oil on the engines. <laughs> For the last. I don't know, six or seven hundred miles, whatever it's been. Um, my data hub has been doing a great job of keeping my track on order on the Predict Wind site. Now it is time to get my Iridium Go going. Got to put a new SIM card on it, in it, activate it, update it, get all my mail forwarding to it, and all that kind of good stuff. So that's the project today. Getting ready to go. This is going to be my longest stint so far as captain on Brick House. Uh, we're going to leave from the west side of Puerto Rico today, uh, Puerto Real, um, Puerto Rojo, and then carry on to Great Anagua in the Bahamas. Hopefully nonstop. It's kind of the time of year for fronts and things like that. So um, yeah, we might have a front to go through, but it looks like a relatively weak one coming through right now. Hopefully it doesn't strengthen. But anyway, let, let me show you what the guys are doing. What'd you say? Do you want us to rig the main halyard, Captain? Well, you could rig it. We may not ever put the main sail up, but you could rig it and um, be ready for it. This is our newest crew member here. Tell us your name and where you're from. Hello, I'm Monty, uh, Washington State. Down uh, helping sail for a couple weeks. Good. And what's your experience on boats? Do you have any experience? Just today. Just got on. No, I've actually sailed since I was. Oh, teenager, and then I've uh, been bare boning the last few years and just trying to get some more experience. and thought this would be a great trip for me to learn. Cool. Well, we're glad to have you aboard. Well, thanks for having me. And there's Josh doing his usual thing. Would have been on the boat for like seven, eight weeks now, Josh? Time flies. I thought it was only five. It'll be eight or nine weeks next weekend. Really? Yeah. So, yeah, crew's up here doing what crew does. Getting everything ready, making sure everything's tied down, bringing the main halyard. done in but a, bu a bucket of water only this big. One of those or half of one of those to wash and a half of one of those to rinse using household ammonia. Saves a whole hell of a lot of water. You don't even have to really rinse it at all but I give it one rinse but you just put it out in the air in the sun like I have now. A little bit of shade right now but it is sun in different parts of the day and it gets all of the ammonia smell out of it and boy it gets a lot of dirt out. I should have showed you the dirty water. Part of why we're going the big hop instead of from here to uh, Dominican Republic, Dominican Republic to Great Anagua is just, um, I don't know, the whole crew thing and sailing. And it's all just getting a little bit heavy and um, just kind of
of want to get there. I can, I guess the horse can smell the barn and I just want to gallop there and get on with the next part of my life, whatever that may be. No idea what it is. I'm gonna go to Brunswick Landing Marina and kind of sit there and figure it out. It's, it's time to get this part over with. Um, I don't particularly love being a captain, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's fine at sea. You know, I kind of know what to do while we're sailing, but while we're at anchor, it's just, I don't know, it was hard in the beginning. It's not as hard as it, it hard, hard as it was in the beginning. Maybe it was, you know, I kind of set crew expectations to have fun in the sun and get off at every island and have fun and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then there was dinghy issues. Everybody wanted to go and play because it was their vacation. Now I think the crew that I have sort of, you know, it looks at it as a delivery and if we stop for a day or two someplace and have a little bit of fun, that's just a bonus, but it's not an expectation. So I think um, now I just, <laughs> if any of you read my Facebook post when I was looking for crew halfway through this, I, I said how terrible the boat was and how there's a lack of water and a lack of fun and, you know, a horrible captain and all that. And I think that's kind of helped me get some crew with, you know, reasonable expectations and they can only be pleasantly surprised when they get here as opposed to, um, you know, finding out it's not the vacation they wanted. So, yeah, we're leaving just a few minutes. If I had known that I had finally found the perfect combination of crew, I probably would have gone a little slower, but I just didn't know that they were going to be the best crew yet. going down, and Josh on his mandolin, and Monty hanging out, and me hanging out doing a little bit of singing and sun going down over here. Sails are up. Main sail and head sail. Things are lovely. We have wind. We're not supposed to have any wind, but we're sailing. This was seriously a great way to be um, heading out on my longest passage as captain yet. And it was just so pleasant with Monty and, of course, with Joshua. Um, geez, if I had only gotten these guys right from the beginning, I think I would have had a very different experience. Uh, they couldn't have been more helpful. They couldn't have been supporting the effort more. And um, really want to say thank you to Josh and thank you to Monty. You guys are seriously the best crew in the world. And thanks Sail OPO, Offshore Passage Opportunities, for having such a great, great selection of crew to choose from. It's been about a day and a half, something like that. Or has been two and a half days. I don't know, we left on Saturday and today's Monday, whatever that is. And um, first we started with no wind and then we started with plenty of wind and plenty of waves and kind of a little nauseating. And then we moved into no wind. This morning it was supposed to be for 24 hours, but hey, we're sailing right now and hopefully this isn't just a fluke and it'll carry us through the night, through the windless time and we'll carry on. It's, um, the wind is on the nose or, you know, just off the nose. We're hard on and um, it's fine. It's light winds. As you can see, there's like no ocean at all. Nice flat seas and um, yeah, it's a nice sail right now. It'd be nice if it stayed like this for the rest of all time. I would have no problem with that at all. You know, I kind of kid around that maybe I could have done this by myself, and maybe I could have, but should I have? No. I think having having other people on board with me in case something does go wrong is a major bonus. And plus, you get really tired by yourself. And, you know, having the watches the way that we did, everybody was well rested and everybody could do their best on the watch. Clean up duty? Yeah. And there's Josh, he's on watch. <laughs> what do you see? Anything good? Nothing. Nothing, Nothing out there, Captain. Okay, good. Keep it that way. 
I think Monty and especially Josh became freaking experts in putting up the running poles for when we were going straight downwind. Such a great thing to have on a blue water cruising boat to be able to pull out your you head sail and even pull out on the other side your stay sail. We did that all the way across from South Africa to the Caribbean. Um, and Michael showed me a great way to do it that I was able to pass on to these guys and then they did it with even more ease and more uh, perfection than ever. So, um, yeah, it's a great thing to set up on your blue water cruising sailboat uh, before you head out. Get those poles ready, know how to use them, and use them. Well, oh, wait a minute here. I'm a photographer. How can I do that? <laughs> we all sort of learned our roles. Uh, we knew exactly what we had to do. One of us was in the cockpit controlling the aft guy, and then somebody was on the bow controlling the fore guy. Josh was on the pole itself, raising the pole up, putting the pole down, whichever, um, to ease it out to the side of the boat. So we didn't even really need to talk about it. It was all sort of just done by watching each other. And once in a while, Josh would yell out a few things that we were doing wrong. <laughs> so he was really the one that, that knew the most about it. But it was really a team effort. And it really was starting to feel like it was becoming a sort of a well-oiled machine. Everybody kind of knew what they had to do to make things work. It was fabulous. Really, really feeling good at about this point. It's always an adventure putting up the pole. Sometimes the minute you put up the pole, it's time to take down the pole. Four hours before we got there, we got the beautiful blue water and 30 feet of water and we couldn't even see land yet. But then suddenly, there was land, we arrived, we checked in to Great Inagua Island in the southernmost Bahama Islands where Patrick and I had spent months swimming and snorkeling in crystal blue waters all those years ago. But my circumnavigation is not officially finished yet. There's a, this is a completely new island for us to explore before officially closing the loop in the Ragged Islands next week. Be sure to subscribe and be notified when it's all complete. I still recall the first time I saw you I was so nervous to talk